and we make some noise for the Holy Ghost this morning. There's even plenty of people that are gifted. But I taught my children that whenever you minister through music, you ought to do it. You ought to ask God that you do it with the anointing. people that can sing and play and everything else but if there's no anointing you're just making a bunch of errors say amen so we thank God for this choir and those awesome musicians amen alright it is now time amen to do what I've been asked to do as I do this, um, there was, as the arrangements were being made uh, for today, uh, you know, when somebody died, um, for those of us that's left back here, for the deceased, we say that. We were the favorite. <laughs> uh, I saw several people's names as uh, close, special people and God children and all that stuff. And if I may set the foundation, Uncle Willie asks his favorite to preach. <laughs> I love y'all cousins and sisters and all. I love all y'all. <laughs> all right, listen, uh, Uncle Willie, I can remember back uh, when he was um, 
The first time we tag team in ministry was back when the both of us was at the Greater Fort Clark uh, Baptist Church. And there was a song that Uncle Willie was singing. He had, as it had already been said, and it's in the program, he had a very deep voice. Yeah. Um, and I, his father passed away before I was born, um, so I did not personally know him, but I, um, I just believe that he got that heavy voice from his mama. And uh, when Uncle Willie opened his mouth, uh, you knew that it was open because he had a very distinguished voice. And this was the very first song. I saw what his favorite song was, but this was the very first song that I heard my Uncle Willie sing. Uh, and he said it like this. He said, if I walk through the pathway, y'all remember that song? Of duty. If I work to the glory. Listen here, um, Luke 15, verse 11. Uh, here's what it says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 11, then he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Down to verse 20. And he arose, came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Amen. I want to leave a thought with you all, if I may, as the Lord gave it to me. There's no place like home. songwriter by the name of Mahalia Jackson produced a song entitled In My Home Over There. She said in her lyrics, when my work on earth is done at the setting of life's sun, I am going to my home over there. She said, I will walk the golden stair and be free from every care. I'll be happy in my home over there. She said, in my home over there that the Lord did prepare. There is peace. There is joy everywhere. 
She said, I will see his face so fair and a golden crown I'll wear. I'll be happy in my home over there. Family, I believe Mahalia got earthly excited about her anticipated heavenly arrival. Our text today depicts a situation where a young man had essentially lost all of his home training. Luke's gospel tells us that this young man had a good place at home. But at the urge of his flesh, he leaves home for greener pastures. And we know since childhood, our parents taught us that the grass ain't always greener. Y'all help me preach. On the other side, life takes this brother on a roller coaster ride. And one day he's up, the next he's down. And after living on the edge, he repents. And his father's love allows him to come home, no questions asked. And reflecting on this biblical narrative, you find good news here. That if you're lost today, there's still hope. But we have to make sure we repent. Say amen. amen. In other words, we have to acknowledge that we're a sinner. Yeah. Be sorry for sinning yeah. and then do our best to stop sinning. Yeah. Yeah. Recently, Elder Cooper gained a good bit of knowledge in the real estate field. And one of the things I've learned is that what we're currently in right now in the housing market is called a seller's market. That's when the market is great for sellers because the interest rates are low, materials are plentiful, and the demand to build is high. Slowly but surely, we're easing out of the seller's market as the interest rates are rising. And sooner or later, things are going to flip. And we'll be back to what they call the buyer's market. You'll see that when we go into a buyer's market, that's when a lot of folk that purchase houses during the seller's market, as interest rates go up, people stop buying, and as people stop buying, the value of homes begin to fall. And as the value goes down, folk begin to start foreclosing on their houses because the house is no longer worth what it was, what they purchased it for. Well, uh, Uncle Willie had a house. Family, when he was in his prime, tall, big, black, handsome, in his crispy security uniform. His house back then indicated that he was in a seller's market. He was able to get around as he pleased. He could come and go whenever he wanted to. Even after he retired from that, went out to the University of Florida, jumped on their payroll. His house was still on the up and up. Uh, family, but eventually he had to bend what they call in the corporate world the turning curve. Right. And after he retired from UF, he started his own company making people's yards beautiful. Right. He even made my yard beautiful a couple times. Right. But I couldn't keep him uh, as my yard man because I really didn't believe in family discounts. <laughs> Okay, what's up? 
Y'all say Uncle Rudy was about his coins. Brother, he experienced famine. I don't have time today. 
Uh, Auntie Emma told me in so many nice words, don't preach long, so let me go ahead. Uh, in the Greek, the word famine means no harvest. No harvest means nothing was produced for him. In my mind, every time he went out in the yard, there was no veggies in the garden. Come on, y'all. I'd imagine he did everything he thought he could do to bring out a harvest. He, he probably had workers out there plowing the field. And as his money got funny, he probably had to lay his workers off. Got to a point to where he had to go out there himself. And grab the hole yeah. Yeah. and start holding. Yeah. 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 Listen, I don't want you to get this thing twisted. Listen, but when things start producing in your life, when things get hard in your life, don't go holding around. Oh. Oh. Well, some of y'all twitched up right there. Yes, sir. Some of y'all just locked up right there. Okay, let me go on. In other words, this brother was without. There may very well be times in our lives where we are without certain things, but what I find interesting about this particular story is that although this son was without, he survived. Some of y'all missed that. I don't care what this brother did not have, he still survived. Whatever it was that he didn't have, he survived. In verse 14 it says, when he had spent all that he had, he then arose. Severe famine in that land and he began to be in want. Walk with me, not only was this brother in famine, but the text shows us that he was in want. What indicates that he was in want is this. The text says in verse 15 that he was in such a low state, he was in uh, so much want that uh, he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Now here's a brother that had it all. He had his own staff. He was the employer and got in such a low state that he had to become the employee. So... One of the citizens hired him, and his job was to go and feed the pigs. This brother was so in such a low state, preachers, that the, the, the Bible, and I'm elaborating, but the Bible says uh, that he was in such a low state when he was feeding the pigs, he just whooshed. I'm from a lot of y'all. We say W-U-S-H-E-D. He, he just rushed. He would be able to just get a little bit of the crumbs from the pigs. Here's the synopsis. When the father granted the son his possessions, the son thought he was in a good place. That's where sin will have us. When we drift away from God, Sin will have us thinking we're in a good place. Do I have any real folks up in here? I can remember real quick, I can remember when my, me and my wife went uh, on our first uh, mountain trip. Uh, uh, and we were headed up the mountains and uh, it was nighttime. Uh, and I had the, the address to the cabin in my GPS, uh, and um, as we were going up the hill, um, um, I'm just following my GPS. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going up the hill was was such at a slope, at an incline um, that literally my headlights was 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 turned towards the sky. <laughs> As I'm looking out my window, <laughs> Chris, the things didn't look right. So thank you, Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost told me to stop. I got out the car. I stepped in front of the car, and I kid y'all not, if I had a drove about 10 more yards, we would have gone off of a cliff. I thought because of what my GPS said, 
For me, after I, I sit down, y'all, uh, listen, uh, here, 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 listen, because I can remember now this brother he drifted away. The text said that he came to himself. Songwriter said it like this that if our soul is not anchored in Jesus, he will surely drift away. But because of God's grace, this son was able to come to himself. I'm out of time. I got to go. Listen, Chestnut, y'all get ready. Let me jump in and tell you the father, what the father says. He says to his servants, bring out the best robe. Yes. Yes. Put it on. Yes. He said, put a ring on his hand. Yes. He said, put sandals on his feet. Yes. Although the son had drifted away, he had it all and lost it all. Yes. Although he was heading wrong direction. Text says he came to himself. When he came to himself he repented and acknowledged that he had sinned against God and had sinned against his dad. Well, in case you haven't figured it out by now, the correlation that I utilize in today's message is this. Uncle Willie, just like the prodigal son, had left a lot to yeah. Many, many years ago, he left and he went and traveled the world. He did everything he was big and bad enough to do. And if I kept it real with y'all in here, uh, is Derek in here? Uh, perfect timing. Uh, I remember Derek. Me and Derek. <laughs> now I saw the obituary said that he loved cars and he had many. I remember one in particular. It was a van. Brown and beige at that. And it wasn't a minivan. Daddy, it was the kind that had the hump on the top. And in Uncle Willie's van, uh, he had everything in there except the hot water heater. <laughs> he called me and Derek his boys. He said, them, them my boys up there. And we'd be riding around with him. And one of the things he told us while he was drifting, he told us that Pippin wasn't easy, but somebody had to do it. Now, and, and yes, although he had drifted, one day he had come to himself. Help me, Holy Ghost. Because his walk changed. His talk changed. He had a better attitude. He didn't cuss as much. He came to himself. And just like the prodigal son,
sandals. He received, I believe, golden slippers. But mama, they had to be custom made because I'm the willing head. I believe he wore size 30. Yeah. 